Now we're going to pick up and start with the skull. And as I said before, this is part of the axial skeleton. It is 22 bones. And there's two groups. There's the bones in the cranium that protect your skull, and then there's the bones of the face. The cranial bones, there are eight of them. And four of them, there's just one. And that's the frontal bone that forms your forehead, the ethmoid bone, the sphenoid bone, uh, and the occipital bone that's the back of your skull. And then there's two of them that are paired. The temporal bones, you have one on each side, and the parietal, you have one on each side. So it's a total of eight. And you look at these different graphics that we have of the skull, you see the frontal bone. Let me uh, turn on my draw so that we can see. The frontal bone is here, okay? All of this that forms your forehead, that's your frontal bone. And then you have... Um, the temporal bones that are paired, you have one on each side, that's where your ear is. And you also have um, two parietal bones that meet right in the middle of your head. You have one on each side. Additionally, you have um, the sphenoid bone, which you see here as the blue that's at your temple. And it's one bone, and it goes all the way through. You can see a little bit more of that color in this area, and it goes through to the other eye and then on the other side of the head. We'll talk more about that bone in a minute. And then you also have, let me pick a new color, um, an ethmoid bone that you can't see from this view, but we also have in the very back an occipital bone as well. So those are the bones of your skull. Now, the facial bones, of course, that's what makes your face, and there's 14 of them. Six of them are paired. The maxillary, zygomatic, nasal, lacrimal, palatine, and the inferior nasal conchal bones. And then two of them, you just have one, and of course, that's your mandible and your vomer. Now, the mandible, obviously, we're talking about this great big lower jawbone right here, and it goes from one side to the other, all right? The um, maxillary, we're talking about, forms all of the upper jaw, and the teeth anchor into, the upper teeth anchor into the maxillary. Then you have... Um, zygomatic right here that forms your cheeks right there you got one on each side you have um, inferior nasal concha that are in your um, nasal cavity and we'll look at those in a minute in a different picture now all of the bones that are in your head um, are fused. The ones in your skull that protect your brain, they are fused to one another. And they make these immovable joints that we call sutures. The only one that's not fused is the mandible. So that's the only movable bone in the um, head, in the skull. The major sutures You've got the sagittal, the coronal, uh, the squamous or squamous, and the lambdoid. And your skull bones also, you've got um, four bones that have openings in them, and they are little cavities that are air-filled and lined with mucous membranes called your sinuses. And the reason you have those is to reduce the weight of your head and also for your voice to resonate through. And if you think about a time when your sinuses are stopped up, your head feels heavy, and your voice sounds funny. You, people can tell that your head is, uh, your sinuses are congested. But if we look here at a frontal view or an anterior view of the skull, you can see, and I'm just going to highlight the different bones that you can see. You can see the frontal bone here. You see the maxillaries here in that light purple. Behind that, you see in the darker pinky purple color, 
uh, the zygomatic that forms your cheeks. You've got also this great big mandible that's here. And then I'm going to change colors so that you can see better what I'm talking about here. You have these two protrusions in your nasal cavity right here. And those are called the inferior nasal concha. And they are covered by a mucous membrane. And they are little bony shelves that give that membrane something to attach to. And if you stick your finger up your nose and poke laterally, you can kind of feel them as well. You also can see going through here, you can see the uh, sphenoid bone that goes from one side and it goes under here and all the way to this side and, and form in the floor of your cranial cavity. I also just drew over um, the two nasal bones that you have right here that we're going to talk about in a minute. But those are the bones you can see in that graphic. This is a, a real actual skull and you can see the nasal concha even better here. You see them in the, those little bony shelves? That's the nasal concha. Now, looking at this picture from the side, you can see the parietal bones up here, that yellow one. The green is the temporal. Remember, those are both paired. You can see part of the sphenoid bone that's going to go across for the nasal cavity. But another bone you haven't seen before is this blue one in the back, and that's the occipital bone. It's one bone, and it forms the back of your skull. And again, this is just an actual skull that you can look at. Now, if we turn it around and look at it from the back, that blue is the occipital bone, and that's easy to see. And you can also see the sutures. Do you see how the two parietal bones fuse together and make, I didn't mean that to be squiggly, and make this immovable joint that's called the sagittal suture. And then you can also see where the occipital bone right here joins with those parietal bones, and that's going to uh, form the lambdoid suture there. Now, let me go back two slides because I want to show you something else that I didn't show you before. Um, right here, you see where the temporal bone fuses with the parietal? That is the squamous or the squamous suture. And then right here, where the frontal bone joins the um, parietal bones, you can see the frontal, I mean, sorry, sagittal suture. I'm sorry, that's not correct. That's the coronal suture or frontal suture. I knew that didn't sound right. But the sagittal suture is traveling down the sagittal plane, and it joins the parietal bones to each other. And you can see even, even better here. Here is the sagittal, here is the coronal, I didn't draw it right on the place, and then you've got the lambdoid here. Now, if we turn the skull upside down, we can see some other bones that we've not seen before. And it's a small picture, so it's kind of hard to see, but if you look at the roof of your mouth, you can see this up here is your two maxillary bones, and they fuse right down the middle, if I can draw a straight line. Okay, the red one behind it, that's the two palatine, or the palatine bone, all right, the red one right behind it. Then you can see um, the vomer, which is here. Can you see that line? I need to do it in a different color, I think, for you to see it right here. Here's the vomer. Um, we'll see it again in just a minute. But in the occipital bone, the blue one in the back, you notice that great big hole? That big hole is called the foramen magnum. 
big hole. That's what that means. That's where the spinal cord and the brain join together. And all those other smaller openings that you see, they are for things to enter and exit like the carotid arteries and the jugular veins and different nerves and things like that. And you can also see here how you've got a... Um, arch that gives you your cheeks. The first part of the arch is the zygomatic bone, but then the back part is, is an extension of the temporal bone. So they join together. The temporal bone is there highlighted in the blue, and then the zygomatic is highlighted in the pink that you can see. And that gives that protuberance of the cheek. Looking inside the skull, you can see, and this is a sagittal section. We just cut it in half. You can see some of the um, sinuses. The sphenoid bone has sinuses. The ethmoid bone, the frontal bone has sinuses, and the maxillary bone. You notice those are all around your eyes. So if you have any kind of sinus issue, it's going to hurt in your eyes. And you can see them again here um, and here. Now, this is looking, we've uh, done a transverse section, and we've lifted off the skull cap, okay? So now we'll get to see that sphenoid bone better. And I'm going to choose a different color highlighter because that one's a little bit too dark for me. Okay, now in the blue that you see right here, from the temple going through your orbits of your eyes, and it comes on and goes all the way through to here. All of this is the sphenoid bone, all of that. So you see, it kind of looks like a big butterfly, and it's got a greater wing and a lesser wing. And so it's continuing all the way down here as well, all right? All of that. The greater wing up here at the top, that forms this little place right here in the center, right here. And it forms something that's called Turk's Saddle or Sella Tursica. And it's got a little saddle horn on it. And that is where the pituitary gland sits that hangs down on a stem from the um, brain. And it's outside the brain. It hangs down on a stem, and it sits right in that little cella tersica. And you can see, of course, in the blue in the back, you can see the uh, occipital bone with the big hole, the foramen magnum there. Now, another thing you see, let me erase, since I make such a mess, okay? Do um, you see right here at the top, right here, this, that's part of the ethmoid bone. The ethmoid bone is, uh, that part of it is called the Crista Golly, and you can see it over here, and that is where the coverings of the brain attach. And so that's why the ethmoid bone shows up in the orbit of the eye as well as the sphenoid bone and the zygomatic and the frontal and um, the lacrimal bone also shows up there. And you'll see all those in your labs. Now the hyoid bone is in your... Um, neck, and it is a C-shaped bone, and it is um, the only bone in the body that does not articulate with another bone. So it's the only bone in the body that articulates only with ligaments, okay? And you can put your hand on your throat, and you can 
actually feel it. It looks like this. It looks like a horseshoe, and it's right in here, and you can pop it back and forth if you put your hand around it right at the top of your neck, and you can feel it as it moves back and forth. And that's one of the ways that a pathologist knows if someone has been choked or strangled to death because their hyoid bone will be crushed. 